Thank you for watching this video. For weekly bonus videos, hundreds of Blender training videos, and early access to series, join my YouTube channel by clicking the Join button or use the link in the description. Well, now that we've got the character pretty much blocked out, we need to go in and join logical pieces together to begin refining the shapes. So for me, I think I would probably select this object and this object and join them together. And maybe I'd select the arms and join them together, the legs, the feet. So I, I join individual pieces together so we're bringing things together so we can refine the shape a little bit more. And while I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and hide these things. Let's put them in a new collection. I'll press the M key, new collection. I'll call these uh, template spheres. Let's do that. And then I can hide this collection away when I need to. Uh, let's take this object and this object and let's join it together. Control J to join. And I'll give it a name, I'll call it torso, just so we can keep track of it. And then before we begin sculpting, we need to remesh. And what remeshing does is it one, um, allows us to increase the poly count, but two, very importantly, it allows us to hollow out and get rid of internal overlapping polygons because internal overlapping polygons does not work in Blender trying to sculpt. So we need to hollow that out. To do that, we can go over to the sculpting tab and now this is selected. You can see these little dots as I hover over it. And recall everything in the center, we've turned on the X symmetry here in sculpt mode. So that's already been done for us. And if you ever want to switch which object you are sculpting here in sculpt mode, you can press Alt-Q. You can hover over another object, press Alt-Q, and you can see it kind of highlight orange as you switch to it. So Alt-Q will do that. But to remesh the object, we need to come up here to the Remesh menu. And currently the voxel size, if we clicked remesh, would be 0.1 meter. And a voxel is really just like a polygon. It's just like a, a small polygon. So the smaller we make the voxel size, the more polygons will be in the object. So we need to be very careful with this because we can increase the poly count of our scene accidentally to a point where we could freeze up our computer. So we need to be careful to maintain and keep track of our poly count. To help us with that, we can come up here to this viewport overlays and turn on statistics. And we can see the number of vertices and faces over here in the sculpting tab. Over here in the layout tab, I need to do that over here as well. So now we can see that we've got 19,000 triangles in our scene and the selected object has 1920. So that's very helpful to keep track of our poly count. Back in the sculpt tab, let's remesh. I'm gonna come up here, go to voxel size, and I think I'll shrink it down to 0 0.01. Let's try that and remesh. Notice now that our poly count has gone up to 78,000. And these two pieces have been molded together now. You can see that here. And if we go into wireframe, you can see all the little voxels that have been created. But more importantly, there's no internal polygons. Those have been hollowed out. So we only have what's on the surface. Okay, that's good. Let's go back to the layout tab and take a look. Yeah, it's 174 now, 174,000 in the scene. And if I go back to the Sculpt tab, I want to show you a little error or warning sign that Blender's going to give us here. If I click here, down at the bottom, it says object has non-uniform scale. Sculpting may be unpredictable. Okay, so what does that mean? It means we need to have uniform scale in our object to be able to sculpt effectively. To do that, we can press Control A and apply the scale. We also have rotation here. Let's press Control A and apply the rotation. All right, so that's all the things we kind of have to do, all the housekeeping we have to do before we begin sculpting. Let's go back over here and now we can begin sculpting. Actually, I kind of want to hide the arms here. Let's see if we can find where the arms are. 
here we go. I'm going to hide this, this, and this. And then I'm going to click on the torso, and you can see we're here now. All right, so I just wanted to hide the arms so we could see the uh, side view a little bit better. All right, so where do we begin? Well, I think I'm just going to begin by hitting the F key and increasing the size of the brush. And I can hold the uh, Shift key and smooth this a bit. You can see that if I hit the S key for smooth, the strength is 0.7. That's actually pretty high, but for now, I'll use that. I usually take that down after a while to like 0.5 or 0.4, but for this, it's pretty helpful. Okay, so now that I've got that, I think I wanna fill this crease here. And all of our sculpt brushes are down here, but we have to kind of hover over them to see what they are, and that's kind of a pain, I think. I'm gonna turn on, well, let me move this. I'm gonna turn on the names so we can see what they are, that's helpful. And then I'm gonna click on the general tab, and in here, I'm gonna shrink this down until we can, can see everything in the general tab right there. All right, so now I can see everything in this tab, all the brushes and their names. That's a little bit more helpful, I think. So now what I can do is click on the fill tool here and come up in here and just begin filling this in a bit so it isn't quite so much of a crease there. And it'll be easier to shape into the torso, I think. So let's do that. And then let's see how close we are to the reference image. Let's see. So if I go to the side view here and press Shift Z, I'll hit the G key to go to the grab tool. And yeah, we're not bad actually. We're pretty close. This isn't bad at all. So I can just here in the uh, side view pull this out a bit so it's matching up with the reference image. Now, we're going to have to do more in the 3D view. You can't sculpt solely in the um, side view or front view or any 2D view. You're going to have to tumble around and see it from all angles. But for now, we can just kind of help us get this basic shape here. And maybe we don't really know what the silhouette of the back is because his arm is in the way on this. but we can begin to kind of get a sense, maybe, something like this. And then we can press uh, Shift Z, tumble around. Let's go to the front view and kind of get it in place too. Shift Z, and let's see what we can do here. So maybe, maybe I could bring these out a little bit. So you can just get it generally in the right shape here. And then we're going to go into the 3D view, of course, and have to do some work because you can see it's pretty wonky here. So now we need to go and tumble around, smooth it by holding the uh, shift key, and we can begin just tumbling around and bringing it in, pulling it out, getting it the way we want it to be. And as I said, you just got to go around and look at it from every conceivable angle to figure out how it looks from all sides. So at this early stage, it's really all about the grab tool. You really want to just use the grab tool as much as possible here at the beginning. You don't want to get into too much detail yet. You just want to get the shapes down. Kind of like if you were actually working in clay, you know, in the real world. You'd want to just get the rough shapes down first and then go in for the details. All right, so now we've got the torso. Let's go with that for now. I feel like maybe I'll use the inflate tool with the I key and just kind of inflate this area here to kind of round it off a bit. So let's say that's the beginning of our torso. Let's now work on the legs. So I'll go back to the layout view, select the legs, I'll join these with Control J. Now our scale is uniform, that's good, it's all ones there. However, we have a mirror modifier on this. And we had this for all of the uh, separated objects, right? The legs, the arms, the feet, etc. 
But recall that sculpt mode has an x-axis symmetry here. And we've got this mirror modifier doing a similar thing. The problem is, is if we have a mirror modifier and use X symmetry in sculpt mode, they can fight against each other, and we don't want to do that. In addition, in sculpt mode, if we use the X axis symmetry here, we have this symmetrize tool available to us, which can be very helpful. So we want that. So what let's do is just apply this mirror modifier. Now it's all one object. We can go back to sculpt mode and turn on the x-axis mirror or symmetry. All right, so now we can go through the same process. We'll pull this down, change this to 0.01, and click Remesh. Now, I should point out, you could also hit the R key and move the mouse and change the voxel size here. And you get a visual representation, and that's fine. But the problem is I find that that um, encourages me to not think about the poly count and how many polygons I'm adding and generating in this process. And that tends to lead me to have too many polygons and Blender crashes. And that's no fun. So I've learned that on this computer, I can probably do around 15 million triangles. Seems like a lot, right? But you can get there very quickly if you don't keep an eye on it. So what I like to do is use this here. Because if I go up to the head here and press Alt-Q and go over to Remesh, I can see that it's 0.1. If I go to the torso, I can see that the last time I remeshed, I did it at 0.01. So that's helpful to keep track of where I am in the process and try and make sure that everything is at the same or generally the same voxel size. So I'm gonna go back to here, Alt-Q, and let's remesh at 0.01. That hollowed everything out and join them together. That's good. So now we can go through the same thing here. I can hit the F key and increase this, hold the S key down, smooth this out some. And then I will use that fill tool right down here to fill this area and see if we can get these to be about the size of what's in the reference image. Now, I really should have hidden the <laughs> arms and hands again. Let's do that. There we go. Now I can uh, come back here, press Shift Z, and we can go to the grab tool with the G key and begin moving these around to get them generally in the right place. Let's try that. Now we've got it kind of squarish now because I've been pulling and pushing around in the 2D views, in the orthographic views. Let's use the inflate tool with the I key and try and inflate these areas and round it off a little bit better. And then I'll try and incorporate it into the torso here just a little bit better, kind of bring it up so we can kind of get a sense of how it might join together here. And then I'll smooth everything back, holding the uh, shift key. All right, so we've got the legs a little bit more in shape here. If we bring back the arms and the hands, there we go. So we're, we're getting there. So in the next video, we'll work on the arms and the hands and the feet. And then after that, We'll start work on the head. See you in the next video.